be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Pastor Gino, can you open us in prayer? Amen. 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 The title of today's message is Giving Your Best Till You Die. Giving Your Best Till You Die. You know, our sincere desire and hope is that the Lord comes back. Right? The Lord comes back. But even Martin Luther, you know, lived his life as if he was coming back. Apostle Paul, you know, Dr. Ruckman. You know, if Lord tarries, you and I will face death, right? And the greatest testimony for people who live for the Lord, like our forefathers in the faith, is on their death, you know, celebrating their life when they serve the Lord in that funeral. People talk about what they did for the Lord. You know, we had some sad cases where people do compromise and they live for the Lord. And they stop because of fame, because of money, because of, you know, immoral relationships, whatnot. Whatever comes their way, a lot of people fail in the middle. When we see our Christian life, when you see your Christian life, you might be high right now because we're at a camp. You know, if you can't be high right now, then you'll never be high. However, there is something waiting for us down there, right? You know, what's waiting for down there is your flesh, stronger flesh, stronger world, right? And the stronger devil. You know, as our pastor Walker preaches to us about temptation and the importance of us being prepared, important for us really thinking about it, it is very important that, you know, you can't just think about it today. You can't just think about it during this camp. You have to think about it until you die or until you meet the Lord. And it comes from your heart. You know, it's always from your heart. Because a lot of us, we're really good at faking. A lot of us, we're really good at being hypocritical. You know, you could say that you love me, but how do I know? You could say that you love the Lord. How do we know? That's why there's a word called charity. You show it through your actions. You show it through your sacrifice. Amen. During this camp, have you shown your charity to your fellow you know, brethren? Right? You're like, I'm too young. That's an excuse. I'm too old. That's an excuse. I'm too new of a Christian. That's an excuse. I'm too old of a Christian. That's an excuse. You know, I'm too fat. That's an excuse. You know, I'm too skinny. That's an excuse. Everyone has an excuse. No, but when you think about that verse, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Like, there is no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. Everyone has gone through it before you, or everyone is going through it with you right now. It's a promise from God. There's nothing that you cannot defeat when it comes to temptation. When we look at our verses today, Lord is commanding us, right? Commanding us to, like verse 13 said, gird up the loins of your mind. You know, in the Bible, when he talks about gird up your loins, it's like you're tightening it, right? You're tightening your loins, right? But in the Bible, it refers to a lot of times, a couple things. When Lord says to gird up your minds, it talks about preparation, 
and he talks about strengthening yourselves. Yeah. It's very important for you to prepare. Amen. I mean, going straight to point one, preparedness, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you want to give your best until you die, you need to prepare. Amen. You know, from what I hear, you know, Brother Robert was in the army, and army slogan, I don't know if it still is true, used to be, be all that you can be. Yeah, be all that you can be, right? How can you be all that you can be? You need to go through basic training. Yeah, yeah. And why do you go through basic training? Because there are battle waiting for you, right. yeah. you know? There's always something waiting for you. You have to get your mindset straight. Something is waiting for me out there. Yeah. Something is waiting for me. Something is waiting for me after this moment. There's unbelievers out there waiting for you. There's your flesh down there waiting for you. There's worldly things waiting for you. Yeah, you have to think about it. When people are prepared, they're able to win the battle. When people are unprepared, they're going to lose the battle. Look at your Christian life. Whenever I was not prepared, I lose. It's given. But when I'm prepared, I have better chance. And usually I come out on top because when I'm prepared, I don't rely on myself. I rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why there's a lot of phrases going on, you know, amongst, you know, preachers and stuff. You will never win the battle. People are like, oh, what do you mean? I'm not going to be a lifelong loser. Yes, you are. If you rely on yourself. But when you do it through the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to win, no matter what. So, in everything that you do, every decision that you make in your life, think about it. Do I go through the Lord Jesus Christ? Even little things, right? When you're talking to your papa, when you're talking to your mama, when you're talking to wife and husband, when you're talking to your siblings, when you're talking to your congregation, you know, as pastors, you know, when you're talking to your pastor, you know, as the leaders of the church and teachers, do you go through the Lord Jesus Christ? A lot of times, your flesh will just come out and blur things out. That's why there's Nehemiah prayer, right? Yes. Um, how many of you guys, I mean, that's a great, great example. Nehemiah prayer. Just pray. Yeah, amen. How hard is it to pray? Amen. I mean, that's something that no one has excuse of. Yeah. Even if you are mute, you can pray. Yeah. Amen. If you have a sound mind, you can pray. Yeah. And all of us can pray. Absolutely. I mean, one of the best ways to prepare is praying. Amen. But how many of us truly pray? We can never pray enough, right? right. We, are all, we always fall short on that prayer. I mean, if you really want to prepare yourself, you have to pray. Amen. During this camp, how many of you guys have truly prayed? You know, we have devotion time set apart. You know, I'm guilty as well. But how many people in this room has prayed? How many of you actually pray for the preachers? How many people pray for the safety? How many people pray for the... Food. How many people pray that people will grow spiritually? Yes. You know what? You know, we have a young brother here, yeah. Brother Nathan. Yeah. You know, I, if, I don't know if he seen brought it up to him. You know, I don't know. But you know what? I could guarantee that almost all of us did not pray for his protection when he fell and his face was planted on the rug and dragged for like 10 feet. Yeah. Wow, I mean, did you actually pray for every single person? Yes. How can you think that we're going to have victory in this camp if we don't pray for each other? I mean, if God sees us today and then sees your heart and reveals it to every single one of us, does that have each person's name in their heart, in their prayer? Right? Then there's no excuse. I don't know his name. How long have you been with each other? Already two, three days? How can you say I don't know their name? It's you. It's your fault. I mean, enough with the excuses, right? I'm only 11. I'm only 7. Excuses, excuses. When it's time for you to memorize Pokemon, Digimon, or whatever is popular out there. When it's time for you to memorize every celebrity names, sports figures. You're good at it. I mean, you remember all of those names, right? Yeah, all those, you know, forgive me, all those, you know, TV skanks on TV that people I, idolize, and then they covet after them, you memorize. I mean, I'm 
done nowadays when you talk to little kids, they know every brand of all the cars. Yeah. I mean, they know Maserati, they know Bentley, they know Rolls Royce, Mercedes, like Beamers and everything because they want it, yeah. because they covet it, they see it. Their mind is full of those junk. But in this camp, where your mind needs to be cleansed, right, through the word of God, and be strengthened, where do these names stand in your mind? Right? Where's Brother Chris? You know, where's Kylie? Right? Where's you know, Ashley? Where are they in your mind? Are they at the bottom? Probably you can't even find them in the bottom. Probably they're outside of your mind. You know? Right now, a lot of times, when we look at each other, we're kind of bashful, we're shy. We don't open up completely. It's natural human tendency. But the yearning for it, right? They're like knocking at you from outside. Hey, brother, hey, sister, you know, I hope you're praying for me. You know, I hope you're praying for me. You know? The reason why when you see some of these people and you see there's no revival in their life, you see there's no change in their life, of course, number one thing is their fault, but you have something to do with it, right? No one person can make great impact, right? right absolutely. How many people led Dr. Ruckman to the Lord? One. Yeah. Hugh Pyle. Yeah, you know, good. how many people led, you know, Dwyer Moody to the Lord? One. You know, I, I just forgot his name, but one, right? How many person or people led you to the Lord? One. Yeah. one. You one. can make so much difference. And these people around you, especially younger ones, and as older ones, you guys should be, you know, great examples. Amen. The reason they don't pray is because you don't pray. The reason they don't preach out on the streets is because you don't go out and preach on the street. The reason you don't witness is because you don't witness. The reason she's afraid to give out track is because she has never seen you pass out track. Right? So what kind of preparation do you have right now? Mm. Are you prepared even a little? You know, even as preachers, you, know, you get into this number one like comfort level. Like everything's comfortable. You know? The Lord has blessed you know, with the great ministry, people, everything. And then it becomes really, really comfortable. You, can't, you should never be comfortable. Yeah. You know, if you're serving the Lord, you should never be comfortable. Right? Yeah. When you feel like you're in a comfortable state, that's when people are most ill-prepared. Right. Yes. That's when people get attacked. Mm. That's when oh. people lose. Look at the history of war. Right? Whether it's a Korean War, whether it's World War, whether it's all the wars going on. When enemies see that you're comfortable, that's when they attack. Oh, that's good. And then they are prepared. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Oh. Enemies are already preparing themselves constantly. I mean, if you don't prepare yourself, they're going to come right in and defeat you. That's why you don't think about other things. That's your problem. All you think about is you're like that frog in a whale. You don't see any outside. You're like that fish in a fish tank. You don't see what's going on outside. There's sharks, you know, roaming around, right? There's snake or whatever. You know, beaver, raccoon, whatever is that, you know, frog, just waiting out there for you to show up your face and, or birds. There's an owl just waiting, looking at you, smelling you, just waiting for you to pop up your head and then snatch your head away and then just eat you alive. When you do not recognize that there is an enemy out there trying to destroy you, you got to become comfortable. You gotta become like, ah, God's so good to me. Yeah, yeah God is good to you, right? Yeah. So you become like lazy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know what? True. You know, I read my Bible today. You know, I usually read three chapters a day. So I read three chapters. I'm done. You know, I, I pass out 20 tracks a day. I did 20 today, you know. I'm done. You know. I street preach for 15 minutes. I'm done, you know. It's becoming, you know who you, sometimes reminds you and I of? Jehovah's Witness. Our life becomes a checklist. Yeah, come on. Okay, you know what? I'm just there. Okay, I sit on the table. I set it up at a mall. 
I don't talk to nobody. That's why they're always allowed at the mall. Yeah. You just sit there with the literature, yeah. and you don't say anything. You just sit there, oh, and then yeah. you, you put on a check mark. Well, you know what? I've done something for the Lord. Yeah. You stand in the corner for like five hours, just lollygagging with each other, you know, and I check mark. I hope that none of your lives have turned like that, this is good. where your life is just a check mark. Your life can't be a check mark. When you serve the Lord, it's all about from your heart all the time. Think about when someone falls in love. Some of you guys are like, what's love? Oh, you'll find out later, you know, if Lord tarries. When you love someone, do you stop when you talk to that person? Okay, especially when you started loving each other. Okay, think about first six months. <laughs> first year, okay? <laughs> hey, do not compare with my life, okay? I'm just giving an example, okay? <laughs> Think about it. Hey, hey, don't look at me, look at Pastor Gorski, Pastor Walker, okay? okay? And then there's Brother Lawler over there, right? <laughs> okay, don't listen to that brother either, okay? <laughs> So think about it, okay? Let's, let's extend it to like, uh, you know, over 365 days, okay? <laughs> Do you guys stop at 30 minutes? Because it's your checklist. You know, I talk to my, you know, husband, my wife for 30 minutes, so I'm done, okay? <laughs> so time, to, <laughs> time to spend, you know, this amount of time, you know, let's listen, check mark. Okay, and then the, you don't be together right now. Yeah. Relation would have burnt up, and you won't be together. Yeah, that's right. The reason you're together is because why? You want to make things better. You want to know about each other more. Yeah, right. You want to pray for each other more. Yeah. Same thing. When you serve the Lord, it doesn't stop at certain point. Right. It continues and continues and continues. Amen. It needs to grow. You can't just stay there. You can't be satisfied like this. It grows and grows and grows. You know, do you think you grow enough to compare yourself to Lord Jesus Christ? Never. That's why you continue and continue. That's why it's the fight. That's why it's continual marathon. That's why it's something that you just can't stop. You never can say, I'm good enough. You can never say, I prayed enough. You can never say, I read Bible enough. You can never say, I went out the street enough. You can never say, I passed out enough. You know, tracks. Where are you today? Are you prepared? Prepare your heart. Because a lot of you guys are so dirtied up with things of the world that it's really hard. You have to break it. I mean, you have to come to the Lord. You have to come to the altar. And you have to really pour out your heart to the Lord. Lord, you know, I've been a sorry Christian, truly. You know, I take things for granted. I'm so comfortable. You know, I'm blessed with a Bible-believing church and preachers and brethren. So I just forget to put my heart into it. Imagine if you're in an army. Imagine you're back in World War II. And there's German army approaching. And you're the allied forces. They haven't attacked you for 14 days. Are you going to be comfortable now? Oh, yeah, they haven't attacked me for 14 days. I'm good now. No, you become more vigilant. You become more sober because sooner or later, the enemy is going to attack. Do you know that your enemy, the devil, will attack you at any moment? I mean, because of God's grace and mercy, you have some protection. However, if you live like the devil, if you talk like the devil, and if you just act like the devil, the Lord's going to be like, okay, time's up. Yeah. That's when you see so many young Christians, you know, die not lately. Yeah. You don't see it too often because they have standard, because their parents taught them the right things. Because they were taught the right things, they obeyed. A lot of the problem with young people nowadays is you just hate to obey, yeah, that's right? right? That's In order for you to prepare your heart, you have to have an obedience heart. Yeah, Amen. You have to obey. Whether you understand or not, you just obey, Amen. Oh, that's right? Mm -hmm. In the army, 
you know, has, you know, brother Robert, do you think you have all these chance to like justify your actions? <laughs> hey, sergeant, you know, running 6.9 6.9 miles is not good. We need to run, you know, 4.5 <laughs> because you know my body heat says this, my body mass is this, you know, you know I have this type of sugar intake, you know, you know I possibly have a chance to get a gout or something, you know, if I run 1.1 mile longer. No, it doesn't work. You obey, you obey. But why is it that you guys always come up with excuses? Yeah. When Lord says, you know, Pastor Gina goes Sunday. Time for street preaching yes. at 10 a.m. Why do you have to be like, oh, pastor, let's do it, at, you know, yeah. when we're all awake, let's do it at noon. You know, I have two more hours of sleep. We're preaching for 60 minutes. Oh, pastor, you know, my voice isn't that strong, you know. Let's just do it for 30 minutes, you know. No way, not happening. Yeah. I mean, you know, you already have someone like that, you know. So where's your heart? How come you can't obey? You know, parents get most frustrated when children does not obey at once. Right. Yeah. They get more frustrated twice, three times, four times. That's why sometimes parents want to destroy the children. <laughs> you know, they're like the worst, right? Thank God for His grace. When God tells you to do it, Amen. how long does it take? I mean, you hear it from the preachings. You hear it when... And, you know, through all this, you know, Bible study, you hear from me when you're reading the Word of God. How, how many times does it take for you to do it? Once? Twice? Three times? Or do you just say, you know what? I don't care. Wow. And I'm really, really fearful of you. Because when you know the Bible, God of the Bible, He's a terrible God. I mean, judgment seat of Christ is terrible. You know the word terrible? You know what that means? Yeah. It's associated with terror of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Scary. So when you think about serving the Lord, when you're preparing yourself, <laughs> you need to also have that fear. Amen. Godly fear is a good thing. Amen. You know? Amen. You know, kick that out of there. You know, when people respect the Lord, honor the Lord. Get, it, get that out of there. Amen. Fear the Lord. Amen. Literally fear, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, if Brother Chris tells, you know, one of his kids, right, you did this one more time, belt is coming out, yeah. right? <laughs> you're going to fear and you're not going to do it, yeah. right? Because, yeah. because it's, it's, it's a terror, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, Brother Gorsky is doing and will be doing to Josiah continuously. <laughs> yeah. Because he's a loving father. Yeah. You know, loving father, they have love, but they also have fear. You have to fear the Lord. Literally, so when some people ask, how do you fear the Lord, right? Don't do anything he says not, don't do anything that he tells you not to do. Simple as that. And do everything that he tells you to do. Simple as that. Is it yes or no, right? I mean, be sober, then be sober. I mean, wake up. Devil's trying to kill you, attack you. Uh, so, I hope you're not one of these people, one of these wow. men. So, there was a man who went out one night and got drunk. Merry man. And he came home, and his face was bruised because he was in a fight. And he knew that if he went to the bed and he five, his wife saw him, he would be in big trouble. Right? I mean, even in real life, even if you're not drunk and, you know... <laughs> Maybe Pastor Walker goes hunting, you know, or like we go out there hunting with him, and then somehow we get into a fight with an animal or gator, comes back home with, with a bruised face, right? And then Brother Gorski, you know, punches the gator, and the gator, you know, arm wrestles him. And then we come back from a hunting trip, and our face is all torn up, you know, we have band aids all over, you know, our eyes, one of our eyes sh wide shut. Our wife will be angry. Yeah. Even though they're caring for you, they'll be angry, right? So think about it. So this drunkard, he knew that if he went to bed like that, he would surely get in trouble with his wife. So he sneaks into his bathroom. He sneaks into his bathroom. He staggers around for a while. 
he's looking for the band-aid, you know. He finds the bandage and fixes himself up. So he thinks, I'm good, you know. I done bad, but I'm okay. You know, when I wake up, I just tell my wife, you know, something happened to my face, you know. I just fell, you know. I was dragged on the carpet by a bunch of guys, you know. You know? <laughs> so he went to bed smiling. Like, like many of you guys, you know, you commit sin, and then you try to bend things up, and then you feel like you're okay. Okay, he's like, oh man, I pulled one on my wife, you know, I feel really good, you know. So when the morning came, he opens his eyes, and his wife is standing on top of him, right? <laughs> you were drunk last night, weren't you? No, honey, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't. So what did she reply? If you weren't, then who put all the band-aids all over the bathroom mirror? <laughs> Just as his wife wasn't full, enemy is not full. Enemy is never full. Just as when you try to bandage yourself up, enemy knows right away. And that enemy, the devil, will try to just destroy you over and over. How many days? I mean, even during the camp week, how many times do you try to you know, put that bandaid on your face, but essentially, you put it somewhere else. Because someone's looking at you and someone's seeing that right through you. And if someone could see through you, don't you think Lord can see through you completely? Yeah, think about it. Where are you in your life? Where are you in your preparation? If you really want to give your all and die, you know, like Apostle Paul, die like Dr. Ruckman, die like all of our forefathers, you need to be prepared every single day. You know? You know, my message, I don't have too many points that I'm going to go into because, you know, even though we're Baptists, <laughs> I still want to follow a little bit of time structure, right? <laughs> and we have greater things, you know, on the schedule as well with more preachings. But just one thing, you know, you don't have to remember three things. You don't have to remember two things. But think, remember one thing. Are you prepared? I mean, are you preparing yourself each day, right? If you're not prepared each day, then do you think you'll be prepared tomorrow? Do you think you think you'll be prepared day after? No. Why do you think Bible says now is the day of salvation? Because people put it off all the time and burn in hell. Look at your life. Are you prepared today to fight the enemy? Are you prepared today to serve the Lord? Are you prepared today to do your best, better than before? People are like, how do I measure myself? Measure yourself from yesterday. Are you better than yesterday? Come on, that's good. Are you better than two days ago? That's good. You have to continue and continue to improve. Amen. Good See, the Bible says what? Gird up your loins, right? Tighten your belt, right? Prepare yourself and strengthen yourself through the Word of God. Simple as that. But how do I prepare? How do I prepare? Prepare yourself through the Word of God. Strengthen yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you're here. That's why you constantly listen to preaching. Yeah. That's why you yeah. constantly study the Word of God. Oh, yeah. That's why you go out there in the ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. You should be immersed in the words of the yeah. Lord. Yeah. You should be immersed in the ministry. You should be immersed yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You should be immersed with everything about the Lord yes. all the time. Yep. And again, in order for you to do that, obey at yeah. once. Right. Obey at once. Don't wait. When Holy Spirit convicts you, Listen to him. Obey him at once. When preacher preaches and you get pricked, listen to that preaching at once. When you read the word of God and you need to change, change at once. Amen. Why do you wait? The longer you wait, farther away you'll be from the Lord. The closer you are to the enemy and the closer you are to the destruction. Are you prepared? If not, are you going to be prepared? Let's pray.